What's up, Bills Mafia? So what did we learn from the Buffalo Bills 48-20 win over the Miami Dolphins? Well, you mess with the big dog, you're going to get bit. But before we get to that, let's get to that intro. Welcome to the Mafia Sports Report. I am Tommy. Please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell because I always forget to tell you. Well, Bills Mafia, what did we learn from the Buffalo Bills 48-20 win over the Miami Dolphins in Buffalo? Like I said, you mess with the big dog, you're going to get bit. And the Miami Dolphins sure got bit and they got bit bad. Um, so real quick, I want to say shout out to Bills Wire once again for creating this article. All right, let's get to it. The Bills are the top dog in the AFC East. The week one loss to the New Jersey Jets is an outlier. The Jets have struggled mightily over the past two weeks. Meanwhile, the Dolphins, who are the league's darling after a historic 70-20 win over the Denver Broncos in week three, couldn't keep pace with the Buffalo Bills. Miami head coach Mike, McD Mike McDaniel concerned that a squad was humbled by the loss. Buffalo dominated the Dolphins in every aspect of the game. Buffalo's offense stampede over the Miami's defense with six touchdowns. Josh Allen accounted for five scores of his own. Sean McDermott's defense stopped the Dolphins in their tracks early, forcing punts and turnovers throughout the game, throughout the final two and a half quarters of the game. Anytime the Dolphins attempted to get back in the game, they were stonewalled by a tenacious Buffalo Bills defense. Hey, listen. I tried telling y'all. I did. I did. And I told I told everybody, we're not the Denver Broncos. Okay? We are not the Los Angeles. I'm sorry. Yeah, Los Angeles Los Angeles Chargers. Right? We aren't the Patriots. We are the AFC East champions three times in a row. A team that's proven, a team that is one of the best teams on offense one of the best teams in defense and probably after yesterday's game probably number one across the board in my opinion um but coming to buffalo the dolphins were riding high and they thought they could just come into buffalo and take what's ours and listen sean mcdermott's defense is aggressive it's not Leslie Frazier style defense. And I think the Dolphins really thought the Buffalo Bills were going to stay in, stay in a soft zone, which by the way, we did stay in a say, stay in a zone to start the game. Dolphins scored right away. Back to back series, they scored touchdowns, right? What did McDermott do? He adjusted. He started playing man. He started playing physical. He started putting more pressure on Tua. And it just totally threw his rhythm out. And the Buffalo Bills offense just kept scoring drive after drive after drive. Then we started getting turnovers and we scored on turnovers. The Dolphins had no answer for the Buffalo Bills. Sean McDermott out coach Mike McDaniel, who could not find his way in that game. No adjustments were made from the Dolphins side of things. Um, I had a lot of Dolphin fans hitting me up all week talking trash. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't talk trash. It's one thing I don't do here. I'll give you reasons why I think we should win. And I'll tell you, you know, why we lost the game. If we did lose a game, I'm about as honest as I can be here. But I definitely don't talk trash and I don't go to uh, go out of my way to talk trash. And I kept telling them, all right, you know. We'll see Sunday. And, you know, you could say Josh Allen sucks all you want, but Josh Allen has owned the Miami Dolphins. And 
they had nothing to say about that. And those people were nowhere to be found um, after the game on my post-game show. <laughs> so once again, guys, be humble. And I'm talking to everyone, sport fans out there. Be humble in victory. Be humble in loss. It is what it is. Move on. It's the best thing to do. And, you know, this win is great, but we have a long way to go, guys. But it's a great thing that we, um, you know, beat an AFC East team because we were 0-1 in the division. It was a great thing to win over the Dolphins because that's my most hated team, and that's one of our biggest rivalries. And just to really shut up um, the fan base of the Dolphins and really the, the national media who, you know, was picking the Dolphins to go to the Super Bowl and the greatest, you know, show on surf and all the hype they got. And, and, and listen, it was deserved after a 70-point win. But once again, that Denver Broncos team just laid flat. And I told everybody, the Buffalo Bills defense is not going to lay flat for anybody. I don't care who you are. I care if you're the Chiefs. I don't care who you are. We come to play, and we're going to give it our all. And we're, you know, we have playmakers on this team. Mind you, no Von Miller in this game. Wait till Von gets back. All right, let's get back to it. Josh Allen still owns the Dolphins. It was a heck of a day for the Bills signal caller. Allen earned a perfect quarterback rating. Yes, perfect quarterback rating. Same guy, by the way, who Dolphin fans said suck. Yeah. Doesn't come, he doesn't play, you know, you know, he falls flat in big moments, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay. He owns you guys. That's, that's, you know, there's no doubt about it. Anyways, Allen threw, Allen earned a perfect quarterback rating of 158.3. He threw as many touchdowns as incompletions for, for good measure, he added a rushing touchdown to his ledger. All told, Allen went for 21 or 25 for 320 passing yards. And four touchdown passes. He had a 17 rushing yards on four carries and the affordable touchdown on the ground. Entering the game, Miami's Tua was rocketing up the MVP boards. Allen's performance on Sunday reminded people that they should be considering the Buffalo's quarterback one as a leading candidate. And I agree. He had a bad week one. There's no doubt about it. I think the whole Buffalo's team, at least offensively, just was out of sync, you know, week one. And it is what it is. Quarter, You know, the best quarterbacks throughout history is, have had bad games. I'm telling you, no quarterback has been perfect uh, throughout his career. There's going to be games where they just like, damn, um, miserable, right? And Allen's week one performance was miserable. And he knows that. He understands that. What has he done since? He's thrown one interception since then. He's uh played smart football he's uh you know obviously not turning the ball over right he's sliding he's doing all the right things he's going through his reads he's looking for uh different weapons on offense now he's getting it to our playmakers different playmakers not just stefan Diggs. he's spreading the ball around um and i i just love what i see from josh allen early on this season except for week one he's bounced back he took week one uh, to heart. And, you know, we all know the good Josh Allen, right? We all know the bad Josh Allen at times. The bad Josh Allen doesn't always show up, guys. That, that, that You know, a lot of people want you to believe that Josh Allen, uh, the bad Josh Allen, the turnover Josh Allen is, is a consistent thing all the time. That's just not the case. That's not true. Uh, Josh Allen's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And a lot of NFL teams wish they could have Josh Allen. Though they might tell you, fan base is, oh, you said, trust me, they take him in a heartbeat. And yes, he owns the Dolphins. And, you know, once again, he proves that he can come up in big, big games, big moments, because this was a big game. This was the game of the weekend. Um, and we absolutely crushed the Miami Dolphins. And he absolutely looked like he was an MVP type quarterback. All right. Next on the list. Stefan Diggs is him. Diggs put up. Diggs put the Dolphins secondary on skates. Half of his six receptions found the end zone. Diggs had a spectacular spin, which left two Dolphins defenders in the dust on the way to the end zone. All in all, Diggs six receptions totaled 127 receiving yards, three touchdowns receptions. 
he was a complete problem for Miami cornerback Kadir Kohu. I can't even pronounce his name. Kohu, Kohu, sorry. Who was largely unsuccessful at tracking digs throughout the game. Yeah, he he absolutely destroyed him. But I, it's funny to me that Dolphin fans, because I'm seeing this now, uh, you know, even got comments from some Dolphin fans like, oh, if our defense was better, we would have won that game. Hmm, really? You put up 20 points on offense. You think that even if your defense was slightly better, we would have not put up more than 20 points? You're insane. Once again, just an excuse. And I don't, I try not to, I try not to do that as a Bills fan. When we lose, I try not to do that. The excuse thing, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a terrible look. You know, you lost. It is what it is. Move on. You're a good team, but we beat you. And Stefan Diggs, once again, you must not watch football for anybody commenting that your corner is the reason why, blah, blah. Stefan Diggs does this against the best of the best. Okay. Maybe Kohu, whatever his name is, isn't your best corner. And that's fine. But go watch Diggs. He goes usually against the top tier corners and he does it week in and week out. That's why he's one of the best receivers in the NFL. Give him his dues. Give him his credit. It doesn't matter who you had lined up. I don't care if Jalen Ramsey was in the game. Go back, look at week one in 2022 when we played the Rams, and Jalen Ramsey was getting burnt all over the place. Diggs owned Ramsey in that game. So you think Ramsey could have done, done any better in this game? Absolutely not. But once again, you're looking for excuses. And that's not that's that's uh that's gonna bite you in the end because every every team has an excuse, buddy. All right, next up. The defense is creeping into elite territory. Miami's opening two drives indicated that this would be a high scoring affair with both both offenses trading scores. Instead, the Bills defense stifled sti I'm sorry, the Bills defense stifled the Miami's offense. The Dolphins were forced to punt on their third offensive drive. From that series, it seemed the Bills' defense was always a step ahead in the game. Buffalo recorded four sacks and forced two fourth and outs that ended with sacks. Nine quarterback hits, two forced fumbles, one for loss, and an interception. Entering Sunday night's game, Buffalo was third in the league in points allowed behind Dallas and Kansas City. I mean, what more can I tell you? I told you the keys of the game was, you know, to play a little zone defense at the start and then start putting pressure against Tua midway through the game. And that's exactly what they did. And they really confused Tua. And I said there weren't they weren't going to get a lot of sacks, though they did. But I want to just pressure on Tua. I wanted Tua to know we were there. Just hit Tua a few times. Let him know. Put your hands up. Swat some passes, right? And that's what the Bills defense did. They were in the face of Tua all game long for the most part. Uh, after those two series, when, when McDermott adjusted, the Bills defense started playing more physical, was jamming up the receivers at the line. It was a beautiful thing. And, and, and Tua was, you know, Tua is a first read quarterback. And when we throw that off, uh, that's when he holds the ball a little bit longer. And that's when we got to him, plain and simple. And the Bills defense have proven once again that one, they are one of the best in the league. To me, they're right up there with Dallas. Right, I mean, they're neck and neck with Dallas. I'm not going to sit here and tell you the Bills defense is the best defense right now in the NFL. I think Dallas's defense is very, very good. Uh, they lost Diggs, which was a huge loss, and we also lost uh, Trey White, which is a huge loss for the Buffalo Bills. So, um, you know, hopefully – you know, Benford and Dane Jackson can really step up their play because they've been playing well. Don't get me wrong. And by the way, Dane Jackson coming in yesterday for Benford early on really made, it, made an impact. He played very, very well. Physical. I love the play by Dane Jackson. I, I need him to keep that up moving forward because Trey White tore his Achilles, guys. He will not be back this season. So we need guys like that to step up. And Kyrie Elam, hello. Guess what, bud? You're going to get called up. And you're probably going to see some playing time. We need you to step up. Now's your opportunity. You wanted it. You got it. This is it. And the fans want you to have it. Trust me. Bill's Mafia has been screaming 
uh, to get you involved, get you in games, right? Dr have you get dressed up for games, right? Not just have you on a sideline. Now's your opportunity. More than likely, you're going to be called up. So, Kair, this is it. Now's your opportunity. And I'll be honest with you. If you don't earn it this year while you have the opportunity now, you're probably not going to be on the Buffalo Bills moving forward after this season. I'm just going to be real with you. Then you're never going to get it. Um, but I have faith in the Kair. I've seen the good side of Kair. I've seen the good play from Kair. Um, I think the guy could do it. But like I said, you got to show it on the field, man. All right, next up. The game plan was awesome. The defensive game plan stunted the dynamic Miami offense. Buffalo worked well to prevent big plays against the Dolphins. For all the talk of McDaniel being a coaching genius for how he is utilizing all the speed on Miami's offense, it went for not Sunday. Buffalo held the Dolphins to 20 points after McDermott made adjustments midway through the second quarter. It was Buffalo who had the upper hand. Dolphins wide receiver Tyreek Hill said the Bills cornerbacks had no fear in their eyes because they knew they had help over the top. By the way, no Jordan Poyer. Shout out to Taylor Rapp, too. This followed along with the Bills winning in the trenches. Buffalo's defensive line won battles at the scrimmage, and the linebackers flew everywhere, preventing any damage over the middle. The secondary kept things under wraps, not allowing Hill and Jalen Waddle to find room behind the unit. Bills offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey did a masterful job of play calling. Dorsey gave Allen many options, and the quarterback picked the Dolphins apart with ease. Buffalo had a balanced and efficient running attack with an aerial attack that moves the ball well with ease. When necessary, Allen can go for the big play. However, with better intermediate options, Allen doesn't have to force balls. The plan, the plan produced was one of the most efficient games in Bill's history. And I agree with that. Man, listen, Sean McDermott, Ken Dorsey, that whole coaching staff, they brung their A game. They most certainly did. Shout out to Sean McDermott. Shout out to Ken Dorsey. Um, masterful, honestly. Very, very good. Um, and I know I was a little rough on Ken Dorsey last week. And by the way, I've been a huge Ken Dorsey supporter. If you guys follow my channel, you guys know this. Um, since last year, I made a video about why are the Bills Mafia hating so much on Ken Dorsey. Now, I was a little upset with Ken Dorsey to start the season, um, you know, only because I know this offense can do better. And I just feel like, you know, there were some things that he could do to get this offense on track um, to play it at a higher level. And he did just that in week four against the Dolphins. Um, he used the running backs, Murray and Harris, early early and often. Um, you know, he's getting the running attack going in general. He's getting Allen under center more, more play action, right? More man's, uh, men, uh, man in motion, like more motions. Everything was looking smooth there. That's exactly what I wanted to see from Ken Dorsey. He doesn't need to be Mr. Trick Play Coordinator. I don't need that. I need a, I need a smart, efficient uh, game. And that's exactly what he's been calling over the last three weeks, uh, in my opinion. Um, now, obviously, week three, I was a little upset with him because I felt like um, you know, he didn't use the running backs correctly. Um, but as you saw in week four, Murray was in there a lot earlier. And... In my opinion, Murray needs to be in there earlier. Murray, to me, is the key to this running attack, in my opinion. And I love James Cook. And James Cook is the RB1, no doubt about it. I'm not saying Murray should be RB1, so don't get it twisted. But I think Murray is the guy that could start, you know, that you can lead with to start breaking down defenses. He's super physical. He still has speed. He's still a good pass catcher. You can really use Murray uh, – in your offensive game planning. He's he's that time type of player. And then you get Cook going as that defense starting to crack. And you know, now Cook didn't get going so much this game, but he still had 12 carries. But what does that tell you? That tells you that the Dolphins defense and defenses moving forward um are going to have to uh play the run, right? They're gonna have to respect the Buffalo Bills running a game, running, running attack. 
And when they do that, that's when play action passes actually work. And you saw that against the Dolphins. You saw that in week two. You saw that in week three. That's the state. That's the success you can have when you run the ball, even when it's not the greatest day on the ground. James Cook, like I said, once again, did not have the greatest day, but he still had 12 carries. And the Dolphins still had to respect the run. And, and I love it, man. Not every game, by the way, is going to be a great game by the running back, but you still got to use them. You still got to utilize the running attack to open up the passing. And, and I think Ken Dorsey, you got to give him credit for that this season. He's really, he's really trying to run the ball more and actually take away a lot uh design, a lot of design runs from Allen away, which I love. Keep Allen healthy, man. All right, next up. The secondary hold held its own. They put hold. Uh, Buffalo secondary was hit by the injury bug entering the game. Jordan Poyer did not suit up due to knee injury. Taylor Rapp did well in Poyer's place. <clears throat> the Bills proceeded to see Micah Hodd and Christian Benford leave the game with ailments. Both players returned to the game. Thank God. Trey White suffered what many fear to be a serious injury to Achilles. Buffalo secondary continued to dominate the Dolphins throughout all of this. Dane Jackson stepped up big on Sunday. He will surely have a larger role moving forward. Um, yeah, man. Our, uh, kudos to them. Like I said earlier, Dane Jackson, when his number was called, came in. He laid a big hit right away, too. Played physical, uh, played tight, sticky defense. Love what I saw from Dane Jackson. Matter of fact, I love what I saw from Dane Jackson in preseason. I thought he did, he played very, very well. Uh, I thought Benford played just a tad better to earn that CB2 spot. But honestly, if they went with Dane Jackson, I wouldn't have been mad either. Um, I thought Dane played that well in preseason. And guys, we're lucky that he played well. We're lucky he's playing at a, at a different level because now we need him more than ever. Trey's done for the season. That These are facts. And we need that Dane Jackson that we've been getting in preseason. And now in week four, we need that co to continue moving forward. And Christian Benford, same thing. We need you to actually play a little better, step up a little bit more. But I uh, love your physicality. I love that you, that, you know, when a play happens on you, you just get, you know, you get right back in that huddle and you play defense again. You do it. You, you don't get too down on yourself. I love that about you, man. Uh, you're young and that, that, that kid's only going to get better in my opinion. Um, and like I said about Kair, Kair, here it is. Here it is. Your opportunity is coming. Um, by the way, Taylor Rapp filling in for Jordan Poyer did a very good job. Um, hopefully Jordan Poyer is back soon because we do need Jordan Poyer. For as much as I like Taylor Rapp, um, Poyer is a better player and uh, we need him back. Micah Hyde, man. I love Micah Hyde. Thank God Micah Hyde, uh, you know, didn't get hurt. In this game, though, he went in the blue tent, but he came out back, came back in the game. Glad to see that. For the most part, injury-free, except for the Trey White injury, which really, really hurts, man. Uh, but we're going to be all right. Von Miller is at practice this week, returns to practice this week. Will he play week five? I'm going to say no, but who knows? I have no idea, man. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I, I said week six a while back. But we'll see. If Von, if, listen, if Von wants to play and the coaching staff feels comfortable, maybe see Von week five in limited action. But, man, I cannot wait for Von to get back. This defense is going to be even nastier. Well, Bills Mafia, uh, man, that was an epic win. It was an awesome win. Um, it is a regular season game. It is only week four going on to week five now. Um, so once again, we know the rules, right? It's a long season. So we're not going to be pounding our chest uh, like this was a Super Bowl. This was a this was a good win. This was a uh, division win, uh, you know, which we need. Um, this puts us back on the top of the AFC East, which is good to be the top dog again. Uh, but you're going to hear a lot of outside noise now, of course, claiming we're the best now. And some are going to still say the Dolphins are still the team. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Who cares? Week to week, right? Handle your business week to week. Next game up, Jaguars. Handle your biz handle our business in, in, in London. Get that game over with. Come back home, beat the Giants, right? One game at a time. Uh, let everything help else fold, you know, how it's supposed to fold. So, um, anyways, guys, Bills Mafia, I love you. And as always, go Bills. I'm out of here. Peace.
Oh my God, go. He could go all the way. Touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. The Bills make me want to kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills are making it happen now. Stand up now, come on and shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello.